Hey everybody, and welcome back to Reflecting Shakespeare TV. My name is Erica, and I'm the manager and facilitator for the Old Globe's Reflecting Shakespeare program that we bring to men and women experiencing incarceration. Today we'll be reading some Shakespeare and doing some journaling, so get your pen, pencil, journal, or paper handy for that. And now, let's bring on the dream team. It's James and Nikki. Hi guys, hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. It's great to see you. Hi guys. So my name is Nikki. Thank you. I'm a facilitator for Reflecting Shakespeare and other programs in the community. I was incarcerated for 25 years and have been working with the Old Globe probably since the last year. So I'm happy to be here. Hey, thank you, Nikki. Hey, everyone. My name is James and I'm a theater director. I've been doing theater work in prisons for about eight years and working on this program, Reflecting Shakespeare, for about four years now. I'm happy to be here. Wonderful. So let's get started with our highs and lows. Who's going to start? I'll start. I always start. <laughs> um, let's see. So my low this week is, guess what? I have no lows, folks. Super happy about that. That's my high then, right? My high is that I have no lows. And I also have, I got hired on for full-time employment. So yay! James, what about you? All right, here we go. I'll go. Um, my low is I had a really challenging decision uh, to make in this last week or so, and that was tough. And my high is that I finally made that decision, I've acted on it, and now I'm starting to feel uh, relief from getting that done. Erica. Uh, my low is I had a very expensive repair on my car, which hmm. was not nice. And my high is, you know, I'm just, Waking up today, it's a really beautiful day. My perfect weather. It's not too hot. It's just great. So um, I'm feeling good. And for you watching, what are your highs and lows this week? As I mentioned, we're going to ask you to journal along. You could just start with that check-in. So we've been doing our warm-up games at the start of each episode, just like in class. Let's give it another try, James. All right. Let's do a game that if you've watched this before, you may have played already. And this game is called... My name is, and I feel. And it goes like this. I'm going to say, my name is James. Then I'm going to say, and I feel, and show how I feel with a sound and a gesture. And then everyone else, including you watching, uh, you're going to repeat that back to me. Then Nikki's going to do hers. Then Erica will do hers. And then we'll pass it out for you to do yours. All right, here we go. My name is James. And I feel relieved. My name is James. And I feel, I feel relieved. Cool. All right, Nikki, go for it. My name is Nikki, and I feel... <laughs> My name is Nikki, and, and I, I feel... <laughs> My name is Erica. And I feel. My name is Erica. And, and I, I feel. All right, time for everyone watching to do yours. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining in. Erica, over to you. All right, well, now that we've warmed up a bit, let's get into some Shakespeare. Let's do it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, today we're going to look at a scene from Julius Caesar, and our reflections are going to be about leadership and choices and self-determination. James, will you set up the scene? Sure, here we go. So this is what's going on. Caesar is a popular general who has won many battles and riches for Rome. But during the course of a civil war, he breaks the law by bringing his army within the city limits of Rome itself. Rome has been governed by a democracy through the Senate, but Caesar has taken the role of leader for himself. People cheer for him in the streets, but some of the senators are ill at ease. So we're looking at the scene in the context of a leader who breaks the law and seems on one hand to be above the law, and on the other hand is so popular and even praised by society. In this moment, Caesar and his followers are celebrating his return to Rome. They pass through this street leaving behind two senators, Cassius and Brutus. Brutus is known as the most honorable man in Rome, and he's deep in thought. Alone in the street, 
Cassius Ben Brutus's ear about his own thoughts on Caesar. Cool, and a couple of quick things you'll hear in this speech, in case you're not unfamiliar. The word Tiber, that's the name of a river, the river Tiber that runs through Rome. And when you hear the name Titinius, that's the name of a servant. And this speech is entirely spoken by Cassius, but we're going to break it up and I'll read it. And Nikki is going to start us off. So Nikki, whenever you're ready. I was born free as Caesar. So were you. We both have fed as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as he. For once, upon a raw and gusty day, the troubled typh... Just take a breath and start over. For once, upon a raw and gusty day, the troubled Tiber chafing with her shores, Caesar said to me, Darest thou, Cassius, now leap in with me into this angry flood, and swim to yonder point. Upon the word, we plunged in, but ere we could arrive at the point proposed, Caesar cried, Help me, Cassius, or I sink! And so from the waves of Tiber did I bear the tired Caesar. And this man is now become a god, and Cassius, a wretched creature, must bend his body if Caesar carelessly but not on him? He had a fever when he was in Spain, and when the fit was on him, I did mark how he did shake. Tis true, this god did shake. His coward lips did from their color fly, and that same eye whose bend doth awe the world did lose its luster. I did hear him groan. I, and that tongue of his that bade the Romans mark him and write his speeches in their books, alas, it cried, Give me some drink, Titinius, as a sick girl. Ye gods, it doth amaze me. A man of such a feeble temper should soak at the start of this majestic world and bear the palm alone. Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty him walk under his huge legs and peep about. But men at some time are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings, Brutus and Caesar. What should be in that Caesar? Why should that name sound more than yours? Ooh, nice job, everybody. So uh, what do you think? What's Cassius saying? Uh, Cassius is painting the picture that this person, Caesar, is not what he presents himself to be, this intouchable, infallible, godlike figure. And he gives examples. And the examples he gives is about perceived weaknesses. Yes, and he gives an example about nearly drow drowning in the river Tiber and needing Cassius to save him after brutishly daring him to swim in the choppy river. And then when he's sick, he moans and groans and cries for help. Yeah, and Cassius asks Brutus why Caesar should be more important than Brutus, right? And points out that the reasons most people have fault or don't have the power is not because of like the fate in the stars, but because we see that in ourselves and we give ourselves negative self-talk or that negative self-view or negative, negative self-motivations. Mm. Absolutely right, great. So since we understand what happens in this scene, uh, before we talk more about our thoughts and what the characters are doing, let's just have a look at the reflection questions. We've got three of them. The first one is, explain a time when you wanted to be honorable or do the honorable thing, but were convinced to go against what you believed was right. Mm. The next one. What kind of positive self-talk or affirmations do you use or can you create to help you reach your goals? Mm. And the last one is, can you name a leader you admire and say a few words about why you admire them? Okay, so but can I say a couple things about this scene? This is, this is what I see in the scene. Can I say that? Go for it. Awesome, thanks. Perfect. Cassius is desperate to point out Caesar's weaknesses because what Cassius wants is more important to him than anything else. The people's love or any good Caesar has done is really irrelevant. Cassius wants to force focus on like the negative part. We don't know what Cassius wants yet, like, but we can guess, right? I think Cassius is being extremely manipulative. Like, like you guys said, he shared two stories to diminish Caesar's position, pointing out his vulnerabilities and then trying to convince Brutus that Caesar's weak. Cassius even had like to save him at one point, right? And that's how weak he is. That's how he's explaining how weak Caesar is. I think of how people plant the seeds to diminish somebody else's character to get allies on 
or people to not like someone else, which really demonstrates a strong insecurity and sometimes even rooted in like jealousy and envy maybe a little bit. Yeah, I definitely think there's some of that in there. When I think about this scene, I think it's about, somehow it's about taking action or not. And how do you decide if you should intervene and what are the consequences of that choice? Oh, totally, I, I, I agree with both of you. Um, what I sit with a little discomfort with in the scene is the fact that Cassius's examples of what's wrong with Caesar are that he has some human weaknesses that are supposed to be opposite of the stereotypical strong man, right? Mm -hmm. Caesar almost drowns and he cried for drink. And to me, there's no real problem with those two things on their own. Mm -hmm. But the real problem is that Caesar doesn't include accepting his vulnerabilities as part of his strong character, at least in the public eye. And that makes him a hypocrite. And to me, that's always a flaw in leadership. Right, and we're all, we're all flawed, right? We, we just are, and that's part of the human condition. That's our journey, to look at our flaws and our strengths. Well, and I think Cassius was determined to pump Brutus up, using different tactics to show how they have the ability to reign, and they will always remain small if they choose to. This can be so empowering when used for such a good purpose. I realized that when I was transforming my life, I put so much energy into getting away with a lot of things, the hurt, the damage, destroying, and becoming that product of my environment, adapting to the cultural norms that were on the inside. And it's, it's so hard to describe if you haven't been subjected to that inside world, and I'm grateful that you guys haven't. But when I realized that I wanted more, that I wanted to heal, that I needed to repair, and that all along, I had it inside of me. I put forth just that much energy and more with the belief that I'm capable of being better and growing and becoming more than I had allowed myself to believe at some point. A lot of times we believe the lies that were told to us or even the ones that we tell ourselves and we allow those to dictate our worth, our mind. And as a result, it comes out in our actions. I, I really believe like self worth is a powerful thing, not arrogance, but true self value and what it is that you truly, truly tell yourself. And we have the low value. When we have that low value, we engage in those types of things. But when we find that worth and that value in ourselves, it becomes a powerful motivating force. Mm. Oh, yes. And you know, so as we journal on that second question about self-talk, it's a great opportunity to really look at the script we're giving ourselves and to start making efforts to take control of it. And with that, we're already at the end of the episode. What? Can you believe it? <laughs> that was quick. So let's, uh, let's check out. All right. We're going to do our one word checkout. And you, those of you who've been watching, you'll know this by now. And this is where we share one word about how we feel right now. Let's go. Nikki, start us off. Heartfelt. Pumped. Grateful. Mm -hmm. And now everyone watching. Thanks, guys. Okay, so let's do our count out. This is what we do at the end of every episode also. And we do it perfectly, just so you guys know. So I'll say one, two, three, and we'll clap on that fourth beat. Ready? One, two, three. Perfect, as always. <laughs> well, however that was, it's great to see everyone today, and we hope you had a good time watching. Bye. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you. Bye, guys. Stay Bye. safe. If you'd like to share your reflections with us so that we can share them on a future episode highlighting community responses, write to us on the following website. Go to https colon forward slash forward slash bit dot lee forward slash rstv zero eight. Thank you.